Welcome back students to the next lesson in the AS Physical Geography course. Today we're going to be looking at the river load. River load. A river's load is categorized by size. These different sized particles can be seen on the Holstrom curve. And this is what the Holstrom curve is. If you would like to check out the video of the Holstrom curve, click on the curve now where there will be an annotation which will take you to the video. On the bottom we have the particle size in millimetres. As you can see, these correlate up on the top of the graph to different types of load. So these different types of load will be of different sizes. The amount and type of load inside a river can be influenced by a number of factors that are both physical and human. And now we're going to explore what these factors are. The first factor is the geology of the rock. In rivers where the geology is made of harder rock, the load yield is going to be much smaller. This is because when we are going to erode this rock off the bed and the banks, it's going to require much more energy. So therefore, it is harder to erode the channel and less of the load will fall into the channel itself where it can then be transported. This is an example of a physical factor. Next is the size of the drainage basin. The larger the drainage basin, the more tributaries it's going to have inside it. As a result, there's more channels which are going to be able to transport sediment into the main bigger channel hence having it um, a greater load. This is an example of a physical factor. Relief. Drainage basins that have a less steep relief are going to have less gravitational potential energy to erode the channel with. As a result, there is less erosion where the load can then be taken into the channel from eroded material that falls off from the river bed or the river banks. This is a physical factor. Deforestation. In areas that have been deforested, there are very uh, little trees that can be able to hold the soil together. Now trees are kind of special because they have roots which bind the soil together, which make them much harder to erode. As a result, if there are no roots, there's going to be a lot more erosion and a greater load will fall into the river channel itself. Now this is a human factor because it is humans that will deforest the land in order to use the trees for wood and fuels. Urbanization. The construction of dams and other features are going to decrease the sediment yield because when the river is flowing into these structures, the structures are going to trap the load inside of it. This is a human factor. The formation of landforms. Now, channel load can affect how certain landforms are going to be created. Later on in the course, we're going to look at how certain landforms are going to be created, and the load does play a very big part in them. If there is a high load, more levees and deltas will be created because more load was going to be deposited later on. Also, more abrasion and more attrition takes place, which can create other features such as meanders and oxbow lakes. So here we have some questions for you. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and have a go at attempting them. Whenever you're ready, hit play and you can see the answers. Okay, so here you have your answers. Once you have checked them over, be sure to then either advance if you got them all right, or just go over your notes once more so you can be sure to get them next time. This has been the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for watching as always, and next time we'll be looking at valley profiles. If you have any more questions or would like some more information on AS Physical Geography, be sure to check out www.revisealevel.co.uk. Until next time, I will see you then. Goodbye.